Hi, so today is Wednesday the 12th of July, um, it's 10 to 7 in the evening and I am back from my five day ayahuasca retreat in the Mallorcan Hills, or in the centre of the island rather. Um, all I can say is wow, just wow, they are, I wish I could draw a picture or paint something and just try and explain how I feel and um, and what I went through the last few days, but um, I'll try to, to say as much as I can verbally and hopefully you get the gist of it. So I got back last night, I drove back and had another night, my first night at home. I um, had the best night's sleep, I slept like an absolute log and um, insane dreams. I can't really remember them, but they were very, very, very visual. Um, and I think I'm just tapping into lucid dreaming, which will be interesting, and astral travel, so we'll see how that goes. But um, my dreams were pretty intense. They were very real. When I woke up this morning, I thought I'd lived through them. Um, anyway, so today I've been pretty spaced out. I went into Parma to meet two girls that were on the retreat that were leaving today to fly out to uh, Doha and Germany. So I went into town to meet with them for lunch. But before that, when I got up, I was totally spaced out. I felt so relaxed and chilled and calm and almost weightless. Like this massive weight has been taken off my shoulders and just so in touch with, with life and living again. I know that probably sounds absolutely whack to you right now, but um, I just felt this absolute sense of calm clarity and just um, a sense of being, of just being, which I guess we are human beings we, and we tend to forget that. We're always focusing on the past or the future and very rarely are humans actually just being. And today I woke up and for the first time ever, I just felt that I was living in the moment and it feels absolutely wonderful. I've had no brain fog, no clutter, no like, chatter in my head um, and yeah just an absolute uh, sense of absolute awareness. It feels unreal, absolutely unreal. Anyway, I'll rewind to the last couple of days because I think the last video that I did, the last vlog was after day two of taking ayahuasca. So the third day we um, we had a rest and we all chilled by the pool and worked on our tans and all caught up with each other, which was really nice and just had a really good chill day. Uh, we had a session of yoga. So Paula, the, the shaman's partner and helper during the ceremonies, she's this lovely Spanish girl, very creative, arty and just a uh, honestly, just so knowledgeable on ayahuasca. Anything you ask her, she can tell you. Um, it's just a, a bank of information about ayahuasca and the experience and about everything, really. She's just really, really fantastic to have on board. I couldn't imagine doing ceremony without her. Um, it was great to have the, the masculine and feminine energy during the ceremonies and having them both there. It just felt like having mom and dad in the room the whole time. And, um, yeah, it was just comforting to have her around. So, um... We, we had a yoga session with, with Paolo in the afternoon on the Saturday, Friday, Saturday, on the Sunday, sorry. Um, it was really nice. We just all did yoga in the year to then just chilled for the rest of the day. And then we had a, um, oh, I always forget the name. I want to say esoteric dancing, but it's not. It's um, some form of like meditative dancing session. We had that in the evening, which was really nice in the yurt. So we all did that, had the music going and... Um, you all just kind of dance and just let yourself go it was and obviously completely sober so that was something completely new for me dancing sober um, but it was really good and fun and then after that we all lay down and went through this meditation session with the shaman the pit and um, and then I felt myself drifting off to sleep and then the rest of the the guys that were on the retreat started like waking up and we all realized that the shaman and Paolo had actually left us <laughs> um, anyway after that we had dinner and then we all just sat around talking and catching up and it was just lovely, a really, really good chill day. It was nice to just download everything. And even on that day, day three, I could see a massive change and difference in everyone else from day one, day two and day three, how everyone had 
just gradually like progressed and transformed from their head fucks and all the shit that was going on in them to just to a better to a better person. And that was only on day three. Anyway, we then all went to sleep in the yurt that evening, and um, I was out within minutes, which is a new one for me because the last couple of months I've been such an insomniac. I haven't been sleeping at all. So. I literally, I never thought I'd be able to sleep in a yurt when it's like 30 degrees outside with like 12 other people on top of each other in this heat. And um, my sleeping has been phenomenal. It's been so good, such deep sleeping. It's been fantastic. So we woke up the next day and we all had another chill day on Monday uh, by the pool, hanging out, breakfast, lunch. Honestly, the food has been amazing. Lynette and Mark, the hosts who um, run the retreats, have been absolutely fantastic. The food has been great. Raw, uh, raw vegan and vegetarian diet, um, really nutritious and delicious salads, and it's been fantastic. Really, really good eating, really healthy as well, and then lots of drinking water. You know, drinking water. So it's been great. Um, and then, so then Monday evening we had our last ceremony. So after the second ceremony, which was quite intense, I think, with um, my friend, the German girl, when she. Um, had a bit of a freak out. I think we were all a little bit, a little bit worried about where the night might take us and if we would, you know, experience the same sort of thing. But we didn't. We all went in and um, and drank. And this time the medicine was a lot calmer. I actually, my intentions, my last intention for the last evening was um, to awaken my kundalini energy. Your kundalini energy is stored in your solar plexus and that's all sexual energy, which we all have. It's not energy for sex or anything like that. It's just it's your masculine and feminine energy within you and um, it, it lays pretty dormant. You need to activate it through kundalini yoga, meditation and I guess ayahuasca. So I asked for my kundalini energy to, to be activated and also for my clairvoyance to strengthen. So if you don't know me very well, um, you won't know that I am slightly clairsentient. So I've heard things in the past and um, I have pretty vivid dreams that have manifested. Um, I kept a dream journal last year because I things used to manifest, things used to happen and I used to think to myself, like, I'm sure I dreamt that. So someone suggested keeping a dream journal to jot it all down, and I did. And I had the most intense, crazy dream that you wouldn't even imagine. Um, wrote it down. A month later, it happened. I was in an airport in Hong Kong, and it came across on the news, this dream that I had the month before. Um, it happened on my mother's birthday. So I don't know if that's some sort of, like, astral... I don't know what, but the dream that I had came true. So that was pretty intense. And um, basically, I just want to tap into my clairvoyance. Um, I go to mediums quite often, speak to psychics, and they all say that I'm quite um, clairvoyant and I just need to tap into it. So I'd like to tap into that and see where that takes me. Um, so those are my two intentions, my kundalini energy and my clairvoyance. So, And I also, I drank the cup and I... I put it out there to Mother Aya. I said, can I please have a calm and peaceful evening tonight? I don't want another fun fair trip. I just want it to be like calm and gelled. And that's exactly what I got. I, it's, I was the last one to drink and I sat down and I didn't see any visuals that night. I didn't hear any crazy voices. I saw no geometric shapes. I saw no electric laser lights or anything like that. The room was pitch dark as it is every night, although the two nights previous to that, they were full on flashing raves to me with um, laser lights and geometric shapes and all sorts of fun stuff. But um, yeah, so the third night I saw absolutely nothing. Um, but as I lay, as I, I, I was just very calm and very relaxed and I just sunk into the bed. And um, I felt like someone tapping on my head and I was like, oh, is that um, Sarah, the girl behind me? And I like got up and looked and it wasn't. She was lying down and her head was actually the other way. And and then I felt like as if someone, as if my head, there was a tap on top of my head and someone was opening the tap. And I just lay there and I kind of enjoyed it and let it, let it go. And next thing I just felt, and it just felt like a tap had opened and air was flying out of my head. So I don't know if there's any... Um, relevance in that being the crown chakra and my clairvoyance and opening up to spirit world, whatever, I don't know, but I definitely felt something in my crown chakra in my head 
which was, it was a nice feeling. Um, I wasn't scared or anything. Um, and then laying down, the shaman started playing music. He was playing music uh, from his uh, iPad this time. He wasn't physically playing any instruments like he did the other night. The music was very calming um, and very chilled. I didn't purge at all. There was no vomiting. In fact, no one purged that night. And um, I did feel my, my bed vibrate. I sort of thought I was levitating, but I obviously wasn't. Um, I just felt like the earth, like my bed vibrating. And then I opened my eyes and kind of got up and I thought, well, maybe um, the shaman is playing drums or there's you know people moving around and I can feel the vibrations on the floorboards. Nothing. Everyone was passed, well, not passed out. They were in their beds in their moment, on their journey. Um, so I definitely felt the vibration and I definitely felt something going on in my solar plexus. So I'm hoping that's got something to do with the activation of my Kundalini energy. But we'll see, I guess. Um, and then that was it for the rest of the night for me. Like I said, no visuals or sounds or anything like that. Um, I just, I had the vibration feeling, a bit of, I felt something in my solar plexus and then it felt like a tap was turning on, on my, in my crown chakra and that was it so that was a pretty non-eventful night it was very it was over it felt like it was over in two minutes it really it went really quickly I was so calm and relaxed just listening to the sounds of the music and um, as I said no one was vomiting no one was crying a few people went up for um, hepe or there's something that they smoke a couple of them were smoking the tobacco that you inhale um, but I don't smoke so I didn't want to to take anything um, a second cup was called they did announce that if we wanted a second cup we could go up but I didn't for some reason in my head I just heard you've had enough <laughs> um, you don't need any more don't be greedy um, just just enjoy the moment so I decided not to have a second cup a few others did and they had a pretty trippy evening which was quite um, interesting it sounds uh, my friend Sarah, she she couldn't sit still. She went outside. She was doing yoga. She went down to the wishing tree and gave a wish, and um, she was just tripping and had the most fantastic night. It sounds so. I kind of wish I did have the second cup, but they say that the mother, well, first of all, she lets you know intuitively when you need ayahuasca, when you want it, when you go searching for it. Uh, you, there's a calling for it, they say, and I guess when you in the yurt and in that moment in the ceremony. Um, she'll she'll tell you if you need it if you need another cup or you don't and i just i got the image that i or got voices that i didn't need anymore that i had enough so that was it um yeah and then the next morning we all got woken up so i don't know if i actually fell asleep or i was just so relaxed but the shaman was then all of a sudden it felt like after 10 minutes of taking the first cup that he said okay my lovely it's time to get up now we got up and we had the most delicious soup every morning after ceremony we get woken up so this is eight hours after we've taken it, and um, we get we get served soup, which is so delicious and so comforting, and it's just the best thing ever. And I'm not even a soup eater. I never eat soup, never in my life eat soup, not even when I lived in London or Dublin in the cold. hate soup, but this was the best thing ever. So comforting. And, um, and then we all went to bed again and got woken up for breakfast at about, I think, 10 or 11 on Tuesday morning. So... That was nice, and then on Tuesday after breakfast, we all decided we'd go to the beach, so we all jumped in the two cars and we went down to Color P, which was lovely. Spent the day on the beach, went for lunch together, and yeah, it was really good. And then I came, we all went back to back to the retreat, and I got in my car and decided to come home. The rest of them stayed the night, and mostly we're flying out tonight. But um, yeah, so the whole journey has been absolutely amazing. I. I can't even begin to explain the feeling, the weightless feeling I'm feeling right now. Um, you know, the thing, the stuff that I dealt with on the first night and even the second night, I had no idea were even major issues in my life or that I was dealing with or holding in my body. And But once I experienced those and purged, I've, I just, I feel like this massive weight is gone and like I can move forward and carry on with my life. It's as if everything's just clear now and I don't know, just a sense of absolute calm and peace and it feels amazing. Will I do it again? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, you've got to be careful with ayahuasca. It's not a recreational drug. Even if you've done acid and mushrooms, there's nothing that can even prepare you for your journey. I can't even begin 
begin to explain what you see. Um, and it's basically tapping into the spiritual realm and getting as close to death as you possibly can. Doesn't mean it's gonna kill you or you're gonna die, but it means reaching that dimension or that realm of spirituality and connecting with spirits. And Aya will tell you what you need to know, not what you want to know, but she won't give you anything that you're not ready for and that you're not capable and that you don't and that she feels will hurt you or hinder you or anything like that. So it's all and there's nothing you can't lie to her, you can't try and pretend, you can't you can't be in control. That's the thing, you've got absolutely no control and it's a really good feeling. Um, she sees right through you. She sees right through your shit. So you can't try and control the journey or anything like that. She gives you what what you need to know. So um, I just wanted to tell you a bit about ayahuasca for those that don't know. Basically, it is it's a plant medicine to be treated with absolute respect, as I said. And every evening when I took the cup, I would bless the cup myself and I would say, um, I've got huge respect and gratitude and please give me a good journey tonight and to show me what I need to know. And I think you've got to, you've got to go there with no expectations. You've got to go there with a grateful heart and um, absolute respect for, for her, Mother Ayahuasca, and, and your journey for that night. So Ayahuasca is basically um, a marriage of two plants, the Shakruna plant and a vine. The Shakruna plant is what has the DMT in it. So that's the primary ingredient of the Shakruna plant. Now, the DMT is a neurotransmitter which is found in all human beings. And um, it plays a key role in all kinds of extraordinary states of awareness. The neurotransmitter DMT is found in all humans, as I said, and all mammals and a lot of plant, a variety of plants. In humans, it's found in our blood, the brain, um, our lungs, and um, well, the pituitary gland in the brain, I can never say that word. So um, the pituitary gland is the main like factory in humans of DMT. So Aya means spirit, soul, or um, corpse of the dead. And waska means the vine or the rope. So ayahuasca is translated as the vine of the soul, the vine of the dead. And um, it's basically, it's connecting you with spirit. It's the vine to, to the dead. It's your spirit, the rope to reach that level of um, spirituality, I guess. So humans, we've all got an enzyme in our stomach that actually inhibits the digestion of DMT. So there was an ancient tribe in Peru that discovered that mixing the vine with DMT stops the enzyme working so the body can digest the DMT from the, from the shakruna plant. So basically if you mix the shakruna with the vine, mix it together, drink it, it stops the enzyme that's in our stomach from inhibiting the digestion of the DMT. So by drinking it, it stops that working so we can actually feel the effects of DMT, which is where you get like the hallucinogenics and the high and that sort of feeling. It's the most beautiful feeling and sensation I have ever felt. Um, it's as if I stepped out of reality and into another world, into a vortex, into another realm, into another dimension, and I was connecting with spirit. I am, um, during my journey on the first night, as I said, I saw people walking around, well no, sorry, not people, I didn't see humans, I saw souls walking around. And um, I knew they were souls. I didn't see them as humans, and it was beautiful. I saw people. I saw images, souls sitting in the bushes and um, looking around at stuff. They weren't the people on the retreat. These were other. These were spirit beings, I guess. And I was so relaxed and so calm. I wasn't scared at all. And um, it's also said that ayahuasca. A lot of people that are very, very scared of dying. Um, are treated with ayahuasca to to teach them and to show them where they will be going into the afterlife. And I, after taking this, I truly believe that ayahuasca, that journey that you're on when, when you take ayahuasca, that the place that you're in is heaven. I truly believe that. That that realm with the spirits and the geometric shapes and everything, I, I, I can't imagine... I imagine that that's the closest to heaven that, that I've been, well, obviously. Um, but 
I, I can't even I can't even describe it. It's an absolute head fuck still. I'm still trying to process and digest everything that I've learned. What was good um, during the retreats, in between every uh, ceremony that we had, when we'd be sitting around talking with, with Shaman Pitt and um, Paolo the Helper, they were so informative and it was like a question and answer session and we could ask loads of questions and they were just like I just learned so much during the last five days and not just about ayahuasca and the plant medicine but just about spirituality and and life and oh just it's been phenomenal it's been an amazing amazing journey and um I can't wait to do it again. Uh, ayahuasca is not addictive at all. You, you can't get addicted to it. And every journey that you go on, every drink, every ceremony that you do is a completely different experience. So it's not like, you know, I drink vodka, I know oh, how vodka makes me feel, I'll drink it again. Not like that at all. You, you don't know what you're going to get dealt with, basically. But um, as long as you, you can ground yourself and when you start freaking out, which I did on the first two nights, I won't lie, I kept saying to myself, just breathe and surrender and let go and I kept reminding myself that I had drank ayahuasca and I was here to learn something and um, to just go through the motion and I kept telling myself you've got eight hours it's a process just go through it flow through it and at any moment that I that I felt anxious and felt scared I would literally just say mother ayahuasca just ground me keep me calm protect me and I was fine absolutely fine so I think if you can if you can kind of Deal with that and cope with that. And if you um, can just remind yourself to breathe, you'll be okay. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty, you know, it's it's hallucinogenic and it's got visual and auditory stimulation, definitely, which is great. And I really, really enjoyed that, especially, especially the visual stimulation. Absolutely love that. But um, it's also it's a cleansing it's a cleansing medicine and it it is said to cleanse the you know purging whether you have diarrhea which luckily I didn't have I just purged vomited um, the purging actually can get rid of any parasites within your stomach any worms and tropical parasites which is really good because I've got E. coli and I've had like three or four relapses of it since I got it in India last year so I'm really hoping that it got rid of the E. coli so we'll see I guess in time so. It's got a cleanse and cleanses your body literally on the physical level, the mental level, le mental level, and the emotional level. Um, and yeah, so it's just it's I can only describe it as a connection with spirit world. And um, one thing you need to be sh like if you're on antidepressants or um, any medicine like that, it's you know, and you want to do ayahuasca, you have to stop. So you would need to speak to your shaman. Um, beforehand and and find out the process. There's a couple of weeks or months, I don't know, where you actually have to stop all medication that you're on if you want to take ayahuasca because it affects with the serotonin or dopamine or something in your body. So you don't want that to have like negative effects. So you would need to stop that. And before you do ayahuasca, you have to detox. Now, um, I was, I've been on a detox for like the last month or so, so I've been okay. But you, it's really important that you detox, that you try and stop smoking. Uh, nicotine is not good. And we learned, you know, I learned through Paolo and Pitt as well, that smoking tobacco is so bad. And smoking weed as well. Marijuana is really bad because when you smoke marijuana, it opens up your, um, your how would I say, maybe your aura. It opens up your aura. You become open to spirit world. That's when you like, you know, you not hallucinating, but you... You open yourself up basically to demons and spirits and you become an open vessel and they can enter you and you know fester and that's what puts you in bad moods and it, you know obviously it's, it's ruined a lot of people's lives but um, so it's advisable not to do any marijuana before you do it you know give yourself a detox before you go on this journey um, your body will thank you for it and You'll also, you'll feel the benefits of ayahuasca a lot more. You know, you've also got to cut out sugar, salt, anything spicy and no alcohol before you do it for, I think, two weeks, at least two weeks. So you don't, because sugar, uh, sugar inhibits uh, the intake and the effects of ayahuasca. So, you know, if you, you spend a lot, you know, it's, it's pricey enough to do it. Um, and if you're investing in time to take off from work and stuff and, your everyday life to to go on this retreat to do to feel like I was can get the benefits you want to maximize on it so you know give up the smoking the marijuana the alcohol the sugar the salt and just detox your body before you do it and you'll feel the best benefits well that's what I did I was detoxing anyway before I even knew I was going to do the ayahuasca and um, 
the the visuals I had and the benefits I felt from it have just been absolutely astounding. Um, I hope this helped and I will probably do another one of these in a couple of months and just update you so that you know where I am and how I'm feeling and if anything drastic has changed in my life. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there and see, and you can see if it's done anything. And um, if you've got any questions, just drop me a line or um, get in, get hold of me and I'll be happy to, to answer. Namaste.